Hi guys, this is Logan with Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. Uh, today we are going to address a few questions we've received on some of our YouTube videos. Uh, we kind of picked a handful of questions to, uh, to take a look at today. Most of these do have to do with inverters. Uh, so we'll, we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. Our first question from one of our viewers was about the Victron MultiPlus inverter. The question was, the MultiPlus cable glands are not large enough to fit a number six AWG wire. Um, that is technically true. Um, I know when we install these, we use uh, SOW cable. So that has your three AC conductors in one single jacket. Uh, that can be a really tight fit getting it in those glands. Uh, what I do most of the time is I'll take the gland off of the inverter and then you can make the hole a little bit bigger by using a step bit. So um, yeah, not, not too difficult. Uh, you do just have to take it out of the inverter, drill it out a little bit with the step bit, pop it back in and uh, you can kind of make it as wide as you need. So thank you for that question. Next question is actually about a MultiPlus as well. Uh, this one specifically was the smaller version, the MultiPlus Compact, that's the 2000 watt option. Question on that was, does the MultiPlus power up off of the batteries and will it uh, provide power during a grid outage? Uh, so answer to both of those is yes, it does get its power from the batteries. Uh, the unit will use grid or generator power um, to supplement your loads or recharge the batteries whenever it's needed. One thing to keep in mind about the MultiPlus and Quattro family of inverter chargers from Victron is that they do not power up off of the grid or off of a generator alone. So you do always have to maintain a connection to the batteries in order for those devices to stay powered up. The MultiPlus inverters, they're inverter chargers, so yes they can charge the batteries from the grid or from a generator. You can set it up to where the inverter will always use that external AC power anytime it's available or connected. Um, that would be I think most common in an RV system where you want that inverter charging and passing through power anytime you connect to shore power. Uh, if this was in a residential application, for example, and you had the AC input connected to the grid, you might want to set it up on a conditional AC input, uh, so that way it's really only pulling off of the grid when the batteries need it or, you know, for some other reason. That covers that question. Thank you for asking. Our next question uh, from one of our viewers here was actually about the Soul Arc inverter, their 12K inverter. Uh, question there was, can the Soul Arc 12K provide power during a grid outage? Uh, answer is absolutely yes. That's, that's one of the key features of that product. Uh, it can provide power to your critical loads or backup loads during a grid outage only if you have batteries. Uh, so the Solar can be run as a straight grid tie inverter with no batteries. If you don't have batteries in the system and the grid goes out, you don't have any power. So if you want power to any loads during an outage with the Solark, you do need at least somewhat of a battery bank. There was kind of a second part to that question regarding the maximum solar array power from the inverter during a grid down event. Is the full uh, power available from the solar array or is it uh, throttled in any way? You can get the maximum uh, power output from the solar array at any time, grid up or grid down, so long as the batteries can safely accept it. So the Solark can deliver a maximum of a 185 amps of charging current to the batteries. That's about 9 kilowatts of power. So keep in mind that the Solark 12K, that 12K means 12 kilowatts of power delivered to both your AC output and your batteries at the same time. So it doesn't give you necessarily 12K of charging or AC output, but the 12K is kind of a combination of the two. So in terms of our solar production, again, grid up or grid down, uh, the Solark can harness up to about 9,000 watts of solar. I think that pretty much covers the Solark question, so that was a good one. And uh, last one we'll get to today that's about inverters. 
This one's a little more general. It's not really about um, a specific product that we offer, um, but the question was um, basically what are our thoughts on an all-in-one inverter system? Uh, so we do offer a few uh, all-in-one inverter systems. The Solar converter I just mentioned is uh, maybe the largest, most heavy-duty version of that. Um, we also sell the Focos Any Grid inverters. Um, those are all-in-one systems too. And then um, the other one that I can think of at the moment is the Skybox from Outback. So all kind of similar in the sense that they're all-in-one. Uh, what that means is that you have one component, inverter, whatever you want to call it, uh, and that's it. So your charge controllers, your battery monitors, disconnects, busing, system interface, display, all of that is integrated into one component. Um, those different models that I mentioned, kind of used for different applications and such, very different scale between them as well. Um, the all-in-one concept applies to all of them though. So there's definitely benefits in an all-in-one um, inverter system like that. I think for me, the main obvious advantage is going to be ease of installation. So again, these are all-in-one systems. We're not um, having to you know, connect smaller components together and kind of figure out where things go. It's all done, pre-wired, plug and play, uh, makes your installation very, very quick which of course uh, saves you from, um, you know, saves you some expenses and uh, time during the install. On the flip side, with an all-in-one system, you do lose a little bit of redundancy. So what I mean by that, if you have um, an all-in-one inverter system and a component or board or fan inside that inverter system goes out, your entire system, your entire home, for example, might be without power until that part gets fixed. If you had individual components, um, like you would see with a DC coupled Outback or Schneider or Victron system, for example, if you lose your solar charge controller, that doesn't mean your inverter goes out too, or vice versa. Um, you know, battery monitors not working, we can still at least charge the batteries either way. So. The individual parts, um, maybe a little bit more time and energy and cost for your installation, um, but I do think that does offer um, a good degree of redundancy so you don't lose the whole system in case just one piece goes out. Um, definitely a consideration for the off-gridders out there um, that you know aren't close to uh, any kind of a service center or parts store. And I think that pretty much does it for the handful of YouTube questions we had today. Most of those were inverter focused. Um, I hope that was uh, helpful for everyone out there and we look forward to getting some more of your questions. Thank you. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and comment.